Welcome to the Box People Podcast. Today is a special episode to honor Robin Williams' memory. Uh, Seven years today that we lost this legend, this beautiful man, comedian. There's just so much to say about Robin. He's such an all-around good guy. Like, just a great guy. And if you're anything like us... um, then you have your own memories of something uh, fantastic about him. But I still will say that one of my favorite things about Robin Williams, and I don't know that everyone knows this, but I was a huge fan of Conan O'Brien. And I don't know if you remember this whole thing where um, Jay Leno handed over the reins of The Tonight Show over to Conan O'Brien, and then Jay Leno was like, Oh, my bad, I want it back. And um, so, so they let Conan O'Brien go, and Conan O'Brien, I mean, talk about humbling, because this had been Conan O'Brien's dream. Like, this, like, imagine how difficult, right? So Robin Williams comes on the show, um, and I believe it was the very last night. And um, so Robin Williams gets on there. You know, he did all these different voices and everything. And so he gets on there, um, and he basically, you know, does this little song, like an Irish jig, and basically goes... You know, let me see if they can't take a joke. And then he gets up and he starts dancing, and Conan O'Brien gets up and dances with him. So what happened, though, was, so at the end of that, when Conan was going through this really difficult time, uh, Conan one day gets this package delivered, and it's this bike. And, uh, you know, for those of you who don't know Robin Williams, man, he, he had his bike. He rode all the time. That's how we found out he was... You know, having issues with breathing in his heart, and he had to go, uh, uh, you know, under uh, the knife. And uh, so he sent Robin Williams. He sent Robin Williams sent Conan O'Brien this ridiculous-looking bike, just absolutely ridiculous um, bicycle. And the thing was, is like, even though Robin had been on the show, it wasn't like they talked outside of it. You know, they they did it, but you know, they they enjoyed each other's company. Um, and so I just thought that was one of the coolest things. So Conan calls Robin Williams and says, you know, thank you for this bike. And then Robin Williams' response was, does it look ridiculous? And Conan said, yeah, yeah, it, it looks ridiculous. And Robin Williams was like, good, good, it was supposed to. <laughs> like, it was, just, it was just Robin Williams' personality. And I think that bike, the colors of it just represented. I don't know if we can find that picture anywhere. I'll look for it today. But, um... It just represented, for me, like, just thinking about it represents just how big and bold Robin Williams was. He wasn't afraid to embarrass himself. He wasn't afraid to make the joke. He, you know, and I like to think you and I are a lot like that. Like, we're going to make the joke. Sometimes we're going to embarrass ourselves, whether it's about a ukulele or or whether it's about, you know, 100 other things that we make jokes about and the people stare at us. (laughs) This is why we're dying laughing. I I really like that story. do you know, also, I don't know if a lot of people know this, he always tried to help the homeless a great deal. Yes. So when they would film, he would um, have the production companies hire them as extras. Like, you know what I'm saying? This dude was Absolutely. funny. He was ki- He was one of the few, very few actors that I really cried. I really lost it when, when I heard the news. It hit me in the stomach. He had films that... Um, a lot of his films I could watch with my family, you know, and they, yeah. it, it, Mrs. Doubtfire is huge in my house, huge, we watch, we watch it at least once a month, I mean, I, I was, was so fantastic. hoping for a sequel. Well, you know, um, so you know that scene, uh, it was a run by for a right, <laughs> you know, like, like, like that old scene, so the bartender in that movie is Robin Williams' brother. I didn't know. And that. yeah, so I don't know if you know about that or not, but I always thought that was so cool. Like that's Robin Williams' brother, and you know he was just that guy. You know, yeah. like so very cool. Did right? you like, do you remember so, him in the interview? And he says he does impressions, and one of them is a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got that face. Maybe he did. He had no neck. <laughs> And the lady, the lady had no sense of humor. And I told you this, like, I hate, like, when I try to make a joke, 
and like most of our friends, I don't know why we're friends with them, and they don't laugh. Like the other day, you were on the phone with me when I was getting coffee and I had cracked a joke, and the girl was like, <laughs> "Life is too short to be so serious." But what is that quote? Because Sonny is a, I love Robin Williams, but I know Sonny is a bigger fan than I am. There was a quote that he said, my favorite quote of all time, something to the effect of, um, he, it was always important for him to make people laugh because he knew how bad it felt. I gotta find the exact quote. He knew how empty and alone one could feel and he didn't want people feeling that. So that was why it was so important for him to make people laugh and smile. Well, you know, I got to say, I think that, you know, one of the things you and I had talked about before, I think very in the beginning of, of mine and my friendship with you is one of the things we talked about is the saddest people are normally the funniest. Right. And yeah. I don't know how that triggers the brain to do that, but I know that, that my childhood was not easy. Um, and, you know, I, I can't speak for you, but um, I know... For me, like, I never even broke out of my shell and cracked a joke until it had to be after high school. I, I, I'm, I'm maybe just in. I remember my first joke, really, that ever got a laugh, and I didn't even mean to be funny, was um, I had just walked into PE class, and our teacher had this cart. And so the cart was like it had the stuff on it, the jump ropes, all the, the stuff that, you know, we were going to use, right? And so all of a sudden, this thing fell from the ceiling and it was like a little piece of foam and I was like what's this and I picked it up and she goes oh it's just a ceiling <laughs> and I was like oh well that's comforting sky is like, <laughs> and I remember like to me like it was I didn't even realize it was funny until she started laughing and then I thought I make those jokes around my family all the time about stuff but nobody ever laughs no one's ever told me I was funny who said the sweetest thing um, about Robin, I just, oh, I just love it. You said that you had a connect, you know, you can have a connection with celebrities and not personally yeah. know them, but you said you felt like he was your best friend that you never met and what you yeah. would have done to just like giving him a hug and tell him what he meant. Like, yeah, just thank you. Yeah. Yeah, just thank you. What, were, but, what, uh, what was your favorite work of Robin Williams? I know it's a lot. Honestly, you know, it's so funny because you don't even see him, but it, it's Aladdin. Um, it's the whole thing. It's because because as a fan of Robin Williams and someone who just absolutely adored him, uh, to, to hear all the voices and then to know that what happened was Disney basically gave Robin Williams free reign to go in there and say whatever he wanted to say, and then they drew around the character around Robin Williams and what he was saying. And so, like, one of my favorite scenes is when they're going, um, the, he's singing and, and, and the prince is going towards the, the castle for the princess. Oh, Mr. Oh, Aladdin, sir. And Aladdin, you know, or, or Robin Williams' character, the genie, is going around and he's singing different things and, and he's like, you know, he's in all these different, like, like, like wardrobe changes and everything. But it's so funny because even though it was a cartoon character, it represented Robin Williams so fantastically. In fact, I was looking at a picture. This has nothing to do with Aladdin. But I was looking at Pinterest, and I was looking at all these pictures of Robin Williams. Somebody had drawn a picture, and I don't know who it was, because I tried to find a name to attach to it so we could share it and give somebody credit. But it was Robin Williams walking through the snow, but away, like away from the person, the artist, drawing it. And he had on the backpack, which represents Jack. And so if you've seen the movie Jack, and I know you have, I know you adore the movie, and out of the backpack, things were falling that represented different characters that he had played, and he was waving, like, goodbye. Oh. And it just got me. So, but going back to Aladdin real quick, because I want to ask you about your favorite film, but, um, so when Robin Williams, you know, died from depression, uh... There was, there was a there was somebody drew the hands of the genie with the with the the cuffs breaking off, and it said genie you're free. And nothing I mean I think it, it could have been the time because I like they drew it within days of of, of him passing. And I know for me it just man got me into the heart like into the heart and 
until you suffer from depression, you cannot judge judge someone who does. And I, I'm not going to get on a rant about it, but I have suffered from depression. You know, until you know my life story, you, you can't possibly fathom it. Um, I I know my friend Tina here has has suffered from from depression. It's not easy. So someone like Robin Williams, who was going through this medical issue, and on top of it suffering uh, from certain things, you know, um, it's 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 tough and it's difficult. So when someone commits suicide, I just people. I mean, people just like went after him. Like some people were so very cruel. And the only thing I could say about that is. Um, all the money in the world doesn't make you happy. All the, you know, I mean, it definitely helps. It's nice to pay bills, but I mean, you could be the biggest star in the world and you could still feel lonely and broken and crushed and, and shattered. And we, we, we don't know. We weren't there, but we now know that he was dealing with memory issues and, and memory loss. Parkinson's. Oh, you know, yeah. And that's, um, you know, that's, the, the, that's but, 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 but Tina, tell me about your favorite film. Uh, well, I just wanted to add to, like, I don't know if you really went into his history when he got, like, diagnosed with Parkinson's and um, his close friends and family, because, like you said, everyone was being nasty and why didn't the friends and family catch it? And there were so many signs, and but you can't, you know, you can't stop that. But the thing was, towards the end of his life, he said, I'm not me anymore. And his second wife would see that, and that, I know <laughs> that's just... I can't even imagine, like, you know, just yeah. seeing yourself kind of disappear. But um, I like so many movies he was in. Uh, I mean, I loved Aladdin. I loved Mrs. Doubtfire. I loved Jumanji. I loved Hook. I loved Jack. Um, but Jack, I don't know why Jack, like, really resonated. Like, it was a combination. He was really good dramatic actor, too. I love. Oh, yeah. Mork and Mindy was the first thing I saw him, like, Nanu, Nanu, like, <laughs> he was just... Sitting on the head, drinking something with the fingers. Everything he did, and I couldn't believe this, like, funny-ass dude was so good at drama. Like, Jack killed me. Jack was such a heartwarming um, film, but it was funny, too, and I don't know. Jack, um... Mrs. Doubtfire and Aladdin are definitely like top three. There's so. What was the one you said? Good morning, Vietnam. Oh man, yeah. Good that, morning, that, Vietnam. So fantastic. That was another. Yeah, that was another good it one. It was funny, but it uh, you know, Patch Adams. If you think about that one, oh my God, like you know, and, and I don't know if you know this, but him and Christopher Reeves were really good friends. Yeah. Like yeah. extremely good friends, and so when Christopher Reeves had that awful tragic accident where he basically, you know. A horse fell on top of him when he was riding, and um, and he ended up being a paraplegic and 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 being in a wheelchair. But the first time he smiled after that was Robin Williams went into the room dressed as a Russian doctor, and so he said that he put on a glove and said he was going to have to check um, his anus, right? And uh, <laughs> Chris Williams like stared at him, and then he real and then he started and Christopher Reeve started laughing and realized it was Robin, his buddy. And so, but I also got to say, man, when you talk about friendships, Billy Crystal Billy. and Robin Williams, oh my gosh, like, they were just tremendous. And I'm so grateful to know that after Robin lost Christopher, that God had in store for Billy to, you know, like for that friendship to happen. And, um, you know, when, when Billy had to get up on stage and give the tribute uh, to Robin Williams just, I think, within a month after Robin Williams' death. I mean, like, very little time had passed. And that picture that I always talk about where Robin's like this, like that one that I just love, like, in his eye, like, his eyes are so blue. And, um, Billy got up there and, and had to give a tribute. And I just can't imagine having to do that. And, and you could, you knowing Billy Crystal, because, you know, being a fan of him for years and seeing him in interviews, you know he was choked up. You know it hurt him. But, man, when Robin Williams, I believe it was the when he won the Oscar, right, and, and um, Billy Crystal happened to be hosting that night the Oscars, right? And so Robin Williams goes up on stage to get it, and he's like, man, he, he can hardly talk. 
And if you watch the scene, and it's on YouTube, we'll try to link it if we can, but there's this, there's this whole moment where the music starts to play, and Robin Williams is turning around, and Billy Crystal had come out on the stage to hug his friend. And you hear Robin Williams, like, go, <gasps> like, you know, and, like, almost like that happy cry thing, and they just hug each other. Man, if that doesn't get you in the heart, I don't want to know you. <laughs> like, it's, it's absolutely, like, beautiful, and I think it just represents the whole friendship. Robin Williams used to go to Billy Crystal's family functions and, like, hang out and, you know, and, and like, how cool is that? Like, oh, Robin Williams is coming to the royal wedding. Of course, they probably didn't call him Robin Williams. They probably just said, hey, Robin's coming. Hey, Robin. <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, just with Ian. Ian's on his way. That's never happened to us, but... Hey, maybe one day. And so we're going to have that deal with him. And so anyway, but, uh, but um, yeah, I, I, I just adore Robin. It's just absolutely love. I just want to say, um, you know, obviously our thoughts and prayers are still with Robin's friends and family. Um, I know every year it, it, they say time heals all, but I feel like there's still like this huge void in this world oh, yeah. without him and he still and now he's a grandpa yeah and he still affects um you know the youth growing up you know with all these streaming services that see his movies for the first time like robin williams we know you're in heaven watching down and we know that Absolutely. um well we want you to know that you still have a great effect on our everyday lives and we miss you and we love you so much and thank you for everything you gave us Absolutely. So on um, Jam Bios, I've mentioned Jam Bios before. I used to work for the company and absolutely loved it. Uh, and this is fired. actually um, this 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 tribute I wrote is actually up on their page, so um, it's public, so you can go and see it whenever you want. Um, it's very longer, but I, I it's very it's long, but I cut it down um, because there's a lot of little stories. It's very long. So cut, cut it to Robin because you know I can go on and on. Oh. So um, this is called uh, To the Best Friend I Never Knew, The Peter Pan Man. Um, and this was written on August 11th, uh, 2014. Do you ever see someone and you just know that you like them? That happened for me in the 70s. It happened when Mork said to Fonzie, I want to be your friend. It was from that moment on that I was hooked. I loved Mork. I went around the house sitting on my head. I tried drinking juice with my finger. I said, I said Nanu Nanu, and I wanted to move to Colorado so that I can find more. As the years passed, I decided I wanted to act, even taking classes in Hollywood under, the man, under a man of the name John Angelo. I started writing at age nine, and it was my biggest wish to meet Robin Williams so I could say something simple, thank you. You see, Brent and I had a tough beginning to life. A turbulent world for two little kids who had each other, and the rest of the world felt hundreds, if not millions, of miles away. Mark would, Mark would come on the television with his crazy suspenders, and I had an instant friend, a child in adult form who seemed afraid, confused, and innocent. We wanted to help Mark. He could give us a safe place to be, and Brent and I would show him how things were done on Earth, except for that sitting on the head thing, which was pretty cool. Soon, Brent's short life was over. It was me, and there was this friend that I had in the movie screen. I cried when Robin Williams was in Mrs. Doubtfire. He walks down the steps and onto the sidewalk. He has to leave his children behind. He climbs into a station wagon and drive, drives away from what he loves the most in the world. I laughed when he said it was a run by Fruity. I cried during Dead Poet Society. I laughed all the way through Aladdin, and my heart leaped when Aladdin says, Genie, you're free. It was the, it was the one wish that Genie really wanted. Perhaps I am the only one who loved Popeye. I loved him and Peter Pan. Robin was perfect for the part. Tinkerbell says to Peter Pan, you know that place between sleep and awake? That place where you can still remember dreaming? That's where I will always love you. That's where I'll be waiting. It's tattooed on my back. Perhaps I always knew that it was meant for Robin Williams. Years ago, I got to see Robin Williams live. I was so excited. I was on pins and needles. The lights slowly go down and the announcer comes on. We would like to welcome Robin Williams. And I am on my feet in a hot second. My arms are in the air and I am screaming at the top of my lungs. I'm literally jumping up and down. There he is, my furry fuzzy morph. The tears stream down my face. 
my first friend is there in front of me. He looks in my direction, and to this day, I swear to you, he looked straight at me and held my gaze for a moment. It was one of the coolest moments of my life. A few months ago, I decided to write Robin Williams a letter dictating what he meant to me. I wrote it, spent a long time on it, getting everything just right. I explained everything about my childhood. I wrote of my brother and my need to push forward. I told him how I knew great things could happen if people, to, to people when they have faith about it. In the end, I didn't send it. I thought it would make me be weird or make me seem like a stalker. Now I wish that I had sent it. August 11, 2014 will be one of those days that will forever live in my memory. Standing in the kitchen, doing chores before getting on the elliptical, I had just finished making Tyler something to eat. My phone rings, and it's Heather. I've known Heather since she was a very little girl. We have watched all kinds of movies together. She knows it was my dream to act, and she knows that I still write. I have told her, if anything happens to Robin Williams or Michael J. Fox, be ready. I will be a basket case. Hello? Did you hear the news? Her voice is a mere whisper. What news? Sonny, where are you? I'm at home, in the kitchen. Well, um, Robin. And then she pauses. Sonny, Michael called me. Robin Williams died. It's a hoax. I say it immediately. I don't think so, Sonny. It's being reported. I'll have to check, but I doubt it. Sonny. She says it in a way that clearly, that clearly says she knows I'm denying it. I don't see anything, and we hang up. Seconds later, it's all over Facebook. To be fair, they have said that Morgan Freeman, Hugh Jackman, and Johnny Depp have all died in the past. I check the online news, and I see the LA Times has reported it. Breathe, breathe, breathe. It wasn't reported a moment, moment. It wasn't reported a month ago. It wasn't reported a year ago, and it's not a hoax. It was reported 18 minutes ago, and I lose it. It dawns on me that Christopher Reeves must be so happy to have his friend back by his side. It makes me smile. Goodbye, Robin. Thank you for the happiness, the laughs, the joys, the hopes, the inspiration, and the happy tears. How I wish you knew I doesn't wake the pain, take away the pain, and merely transfer it. Transfer it. It seems like such a small thing for those of us that loved you to carry. I'll be asking for you when I get there. Goodbye to the best friend that I never knew. That day that that is the day that my heart broke for someone else. And although though the words of transferring side or transferring pain side were not my words to begin with, they will always hold dear to me. But Robin, it was such a simple thing to ask us to hang on to, to deal with your pain. We love you and thank you. It was beautiful. Yeah. Wow. I can't help but cry. I get a little emotional. Yeah, yeah. no, it's okay. As we've learned in the past. But, you know, Robin was just fantastic and great and funny and kind. And I think when, um, if you have dogs, you'll appreciate this, that all my dogs are staring at me right now because I'm crying. So they're all very concerned on the back side of the computer. But anyway, um, just such a wonderful, kind, and decent human being that people generally loved him. And when you, you can go on websites and you can look up like the worst stars or the worst, the worst people to come in contact with, you know, that are famous and it'll blow your mind, but you won't find Robin's name. You just, you won't. And he was such a good, kind soul. I don't think there was bad stuff out about, I mean, you never really heard bad things about Robin, did you? No. You know what, and, and I'll just show this very briefly. I, I was telling Tina about it I just, just a few days ago. The dream. Um, yeah, but I have this dream that I dream, like, very vividly. But, but like, in California, we have these, like, washes where rainwater will collect. And um, in the dream, I was in one of those on a raft. And the water was so, 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 so blue, like the kind of blue that... You know, when you see vacation photos of people enhance the pictures, like these really beautiful... One upper. Yeah, <laughs> one upper. And so anyway, so we're on this raft, and I'm looking up, and there's like this restaurant. I like how you looked up when I said that. <laughs> there was like this restaurant, and they were setting up like the patio area, but it was, I just love the way, like the colors of it. There, there was like a lot of wood, like that lighter wood. Um, and they were sitting out these wooden chairs and stuff. And I was like, what's that? And the lady said, oh, 
Robin's performing tonight, he's here. And this is his first time performing since getting here. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, you can go up there. And the next thing I knew, I was up there and I was looking all cute. And Clint Eastwood was sitting at the bar in the stream. And he was having this ice cold beer. And he was young and so handsome. And uh, if you're Clint Eastwood fan, you know what I'm talking about. And so anyway, so I had stopped and had this whole conversation with him. And um, so he basically tells me that, my, that there's a bunch of people I know sitting at a different table. And so I go, and this waitress comes out, and she brings me this ice-cold beer. And I'm not on hand a beer drinker, but I love apple beer. Anyway, um, she gives me this ice-cold beer, and it's like, she goes, I know you like apple beer. It's on your records of things back there. And I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, we have it. You know, like, like we have everything you like. Like, like we know what to bring you. And so I'm tasting this beer, and it's, like, better than any apple beer I've ever tasted. It was delicious. And so anyway, all of a sudden, I, I hear, we would like to welcome, am I frozen? No, no, no. Oh, that was weird. I, it looked like I was frozen. It says, we would like to welcome for the first time ever since his arrival, Robin Williams. And out comes Robin, and he is young, and he is healthy, and he's on the stage, and he was happy. And so I think that that dream gives me hope that, number one, you know, I will see him one day, uh, because I do believe in really cool things in the afterlife. Um, and uh, number two, uh, I'm going to be buddies with Clint Eastwood. And number three, um, Robin's there, and he's doing absolutely and so that uh, that makes me smile because I, love I, I, I miss Robin. Um, I think we all do. And, uh, you know. We do. So, yeah. So we're going to wrap this up and say again, we miss Robin Williams. May you rest in peace. And um, please like and subscribe. Check out some of our other videos. We're a little slow on the uptake because... Somebody likes to talk a lot. Um, I don't know who it is, but I'm going to track them down. <laughs> so from all of us at the box, people, always think. Outside the box. Until next time. Robin. We love you. We love you, Robin. We love you, everybody. Thank you.